Hey, it's Bill Simmons. The NFL playoffs are in full swing, and the Ringer NFL Show has you covered for all your pro football needs. Sunday night, get Michael Lombardi and Tate Frazier's rapid reactions on GM Street. On Tuesdays, the Ringer NFL Show with Robert Mays, Kevin Clark, and regular guest Danny Kelly break down all the biggest angles on Wednesday. GM Street again on Thursdays. Clark, Mays, and Danny are back at it again. And on Friday, GM Street's Friday Focus gives you all the insight you need for gambling, fantasy, and everything else. Don't forget about my podcast, too, on Mondays. The BS Podcast, Cousin Sal and I playing Guest the Lions. More importantly, the Ringer NFL Show. Subscribe right now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. party i'm juliette Levin. i'm in a great mood today because my guest it's not really a guest it's a co-host it's the one and only david jacoby thank you juliette for crying. having me on your podcast you're crying now <laughs> just let me earn it you know what i mean let me earn it let me earn it because i'll make you real cry real tears like there's nothing there's nothing really falling down your face but i will make you earn it okay well i just want to say it was a great episode of The Bachelor. I enjoyed it. I did too. And I don't mean that I, that like Ari was really good or that like anyone I'm particularly fond of, but like just the whole package was what I'm looking for in a reality TV show. Well, can we start there? Yes. Let's talk about Ari. Because I don't like Ari. And I'm sure that if I met him, he would be a perfectly fine person to talk to or hang out with. But I have a theory about Ari's appeal I would like to pitch to you. Please do. 60% occupation. Uh huh. Like if he was never a race car driver, have you noticed that? Like every single episode, every forty minutes, they remind you that he was once a race car driver. It might be the only interesting thing about him. Well, guess what? My wife, like, she was like, "Is this guy really a race car driver? He hasn't really been active since 2011." And he's also never actually won. Yeah, he's not really a race. He's like a he was he was like legacied into the race car driving experience by his grandfather and his father. But like, <laughs> I feel like in his heart of hearts, like if you if he had like eight drinks, his best friend was like, "Hey man, how is your driving career?" He's like, "I'm a complete failure as a driver." I mean, he is. He had a pivot to being a real estate agent. Yes, and he like keeps pitching about how exciting it is. He's like, I'm a real estate agent. I get to stay at home and like more time, and I'm settled with my. It's like no, dude. It's like you and your dog in an empty house and four thousand t-shirts in a closet. 4,000 t-shirts is correct. You posted this on Twitter. Yes. It, that might be, there's a lot of signs that point to him maybe being a serial killer. And that's one of them. It's like just having the exact same shirt and um, many of them, oh. like tons. Okay. How many t-shirts do you have in your home that are yours right now? A lot. Everyone has too many. If there's not a single person that's in this podcast that has too few t-shirts. I honestly think like if you include the stuff in my under bed storage, like 55. 55. Yeah. He's got, and we looked, me and my wife looked at this. 55 just white t-shirts. Yeah. They all have different like logos and stuff on the front. But like at what point in your life are like, which one of these 55 white t-shirts should I wear? It makes no sense. It also makes me think that he has like a cell, a vision of himself that is incorrect. Cause that's like very Steve Jobs, you know, like 60 yes. black mock turtlenecks and all the same blue jeans. But like that's Steve Jobs. He had to like minimize the decisions he was making each day because he was like a yes. genius and running Apple. Ari, as far as I can tell, is not doing much. Yeah, he's a real estate guy. And the thing is, it's like, I think he, he sees like the American American psycho version of himself where it's all these different suits that are color coded in his closet mm -hmm. but he's kind of like lives in Scottsdale and it's hot and he's a real estate that doesn't really like go to that many meetings so it's just t-shirts in his world I, on the topic of his clothes he said something very telling to me this week Ooh. um let's roll this clip where he is he's on the date great transition he's on, thank you I this is like my sixth podcast of the week um <laughs> he's on the date with Lauren S they're in wine country and he's talking about what phase of life he's in are yeah. you early to rise are you that type of person or are mm, you I don't like you, just about, you love well, sleep I need my sleep but I don't really sleep then mm, like the last like five years like I just like yeah. just slowly started going to bed earlier <laughs> Same. And wearing cardigans. <laughs> <laughs> What's that maniacal cardigan laugh? <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's one of those things. Yeah. So, Jacoby. Yes. Ari is 36. And mm -hmm. he Everybody is. Everybody on this show has their real age, right? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no one lies about their age on this show, Never. right? Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, in the last five years, I've just been going to sleep earlier and wearing cardigans. 
It's like, okay, Ari, nothing maniacal about being in your 30s. You're describing everyone who has say, turned cardigans 31. five years ago were pretty cool. Yes. Like I, five years ago was like peak cardigan. You were ahead of the cardigan trend five years ago. I knew you five years ago and you had some a good cardigans. cardigans. Yes. And now I've phased them out because that has passed us by. Now we're back at jackets. Yes. Yeah. But cardigans had a moment. And he was right there. But I just want to say Ari has not worn cardigan yet. So I don't know what he's talking about. I, no. I, I think that he has a, just a, a distorted self-image is, is kind of what we're getting at here. He uh, also just thinks that going to sleep early is like something to like be said very quietly or like when you're drunk. I think we can presume at this point that like he's had like two or three or four glasses of wine because Lauren S. is so intolerable. And so and they're in Napa. And they're in Napa. Yeah, of course. Great, at, at what great point date. he did drop, he was just like, first of all, great date. Great. And there is like you could put me on a date with anybody on the planet in Napa, male, female, old, young, whatever. We we're, we're going to end up being fine. Totally. You can spend a day with anyone in Napa. You're gonna be good. Great food, great wine, beautiful scenery. It was a great, beautiful day out too. There. Also a great, yeah, beautiful day, great date spot because you can both be around other people when mm-hmm. it's too much and very easily be alone. Like yes. you can go back and forth between the two with so much fluidity that like it's never going to get stale. It's never going to be awkward. If it was, if you were like from Napa, you're really lucky. You've just got so many great first date options. <laughs> and, and one thing that Ari doesn't do well, which is something you need to do well as a bachelor, he doesn't do BS small talk well. He doesn't fake interest very well. You can very much tell where Ari's head is at with the woman he's speaking to when he's speaking to them. He's pretty transparent. And the women can't see this, by the way. You know, it seemed like he was ready to stab himself by the end of the Lauren S date. And yes. he seemed like, and so he sent home Lauren S, um, which was his third one-on-one. Week three, I, I can't think of another time someone's been sent home from the one-on-one that early. That early. It's a pretty bold move, but he just can't fake it. And she was, I mean, they gave her an unfavorable edit intentionally to sort of explain why he sent her home. But I like this move from a bachelor. I've always been waiting for the bachelor who looks at the 25 women. It's just like, listen, I can tell you right now, week three, 10 of y'all not making it. Just go home. And if it was the producer, I wouldn't be like, oh, no, but we've got this schedule where you only send one or two home. Like, we can, we'll make this work, Ari. Make a bold play. Like, I'm looking at these women. I'm like, I can tell you who's going to end up at the end. Like yeah. We can all tell you. And another thing about Ari, bad taste in women. Oh, man. like So bad. Bad taste. He also, he just makes me like, this is, every time I watch the show, I just end up going like, bleh, to myself. Bleh. And can, my bleh moment of the week, I, we got to roll it. Wait, is, is that a segment? No. I like it, though. Maybe it will be going forward. Let, right. We got to play this clip because I, I, I got to, the vomit's coming. Bleh. When I saw you hula hooping with your neck, I was like, yes. I was so nervous. <laughs> oh my God. When I saw that you were sitting there, I was like, See, you like- look really good in yoga pants, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember him saying, did you, did you create that? No. He said that on the show? You probably blocked it out because it's so cringeworthy. This is 2018, man. Bless. <laughs> you look really good in yoga pants, oh. by the way. Oh my God. It's. That's like what the the creepy cat caller on the street says to you, like when you are getting a coffee and you've just rolled out of bed. Yes. Like that's not yeah, yeah, that's yeah, not yeah, actually yeah. a compliment. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It's not. Do who looks good in yoga pants? Everybody. Yeah. Everybody just looks good in yoga slap pants. Slap on a pair of black yoga <laughs> pants <laughs> and like an yeah. oversized sweatshirt, and like yeah. we all look like we all the look exact like a same great person. Yeah. Whether it's Giselle Bunchin or Roseanne Barr, like you all look the same in black yoga pants and a sweatshirt. Many people have seen me in that exact outfit at Dinosaur Coffee on Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, I'm and very familiar with it. Luckily, no one's ever commented because I would have had to do the, the black. Like, like, it's just so yes. gross. Yes. That just makes me cringe, and that is Ari to a T. He like just says these really slimy things when he gets drunk. He's clearly drunk in that in that clip. Uh, he's, you know, I don't know if drunk is the right word. He's because, clearly you had know, a few bads. Yes, he's had a few. And another thing is like, let's imagine Ari was not a race car driver. Mm-hmm. And also this, let's imagine Ari had brown eyes. Like, I think it's, what did I say, 60% occupation, yeah. 20% eyes. And the other 20% of his appeal is, I think, like having the salt and pepper hair. Like salt it's not pep- personality. Salt and pepper hair is definitely my number one. I would say number two, I, I think that he looks deceptively attainable and i also oh oh i like that because yeah. you know that's a thing they look for in the bachelorette yes, absolutely like he seems like you would think you could get with him but actually you can't like you you have no chance whatsoever um and i, I also i have a suspicion uh, so jared remember jared from do um, i remember yeah. jared so i recently Please. recently met jared have you met jared 
Didn't he go to your party? Yeah, Am I he, supposed to pretend that didn't happen? Oh, yeah, he t- yeah, Okay, just, thank you. I was like, like, what are we doing? Are we doing a bit now, Julia? Like, no, I I, are I we not letting people in on what really happens in our real lives? Well, yes, you had a thing and Jared was there. I had a party and Jared attended. Yeah. As my mom was excited As about Nick. that. Yeah, your mom yeah, attended. My mom your them. three kids, your yeah. wife, Nick and Jared. It yep. was a, a great party. Great party. There are other people there, too, that work at this website. That was the most important part, though. Great. And Jared, I was like, what's the big deal about Jared? He's like some random guy from Rhode Island. You can meet a dime a dozen of those at a bar anywhere along the eastern seaboard. Yes. And then I met Jared. Much more handsome than I was expecting. Yes, he was handsome. And incredibly nice. And he was very, very nice. And very easy to talk to. So yes. now I'm all in on Jared. Like 100%. Great, good guy. He also like moved to LA with like a very sweet dream. I like, I like, I like Jared a lot. Um, and I now, I now think that like maybe there's something to Ari in person that doesn't translate. We've always thought that was true about Nani on the challenge as well. Of course, well. of course. There's just like some reality of TV people who come back and you're like, well, there's got to be something we're missing because here. Because everyone around them feels this way yeah. about them. Yes. And but- I... We watched Emily Maynard's season together. I know that you deleted all that information from your hard drive. I've deleted yesterday from my yeah, hard drive. Yeah, and your yeah. mental hard drive, to yes. be clear. Yeah. And also your actual computer. Um, but she was really into him. It was a surprise that he didn't win. And so It there was, mo- and that was nice. And that's kind of the, what, what brought him here. Yeah. Because one thing that this franchise likes to do is public heartbreak leads to... Uh, sympathy from the country yeah. leads to you being the bachelor that everybody loves. I just don't think that he has the personality to bring America to him. Like, I think that America's being, like, he's being pushed upon the country, not the other way around. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. And so he, there just must be something about him that, that we can't see uh, on television. But so far, it's not flattering Ferrari. It's It's been tough. It's not, and I feel bad saying this. I know he's a human being. You know what I mean? Like it's like he didn't do anything wrong. It's not. It's not decisions that he have made that brought this opinion of that I have of him. It's just kind of like it's 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 not nurture. It's nature, man. Like you're not the most compelling personality out there. And then I I have a counterpoint to that, which is. I want to talk about Crystal and how he has elected to spend a lot of time with her on the show oh, so far. Uh, you know what? You completely took down my argument. Now I'm on your side. Okay. One thing about Ari that really stands out to me. As a bachelor, one thing that doesn't really like d- like win you over or people won't fall in love with you if you have terrible taste in the women. Terrible. He picked the like if I were to power rank all the women in terms of people I would actually marry, I would put Chelsea and Crystal at the bottom. I would choose Chelsea over Crystal only because the sound of Crystal's voice makes me want to well, die. Yes. And and <laughs> yes, the sound of her voice stuff and also the fact is like, girl, I don't know. I don't know. Look, I understand at this show they basically just let you choose your own age, mm-hmm. but there is no world in which you are 29 years old. Yeah. What what are you 33? 34? I mean, look, it's not my job to guess her age, but I would take the over on all of those numbers. I I don't know. It's just like She was born in the 70s. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of people comment on the fact that she looked a lot like Ari's mom, a lot. Oh. Which is awkward. Yeah, that is awkward. Yeah. <laughs> that is awkward. She um she does a lot of uh, verbal tricks that drive me Bonkers, like absolutely bonkers. One of my favorite moments of the week was when my girl Caroline had to leave the room because Crystal was being so irritating, like woman splaining to them about Lauren S getting sent home. I've gotten to know Ari and I just say like, when you have your time, like make the most of it because it's not guaranteed. Get off your high horse and stop being so condescending to everybody because you met his dog, like stop. I just would like her to go home. (laughs) Crystal was like trying to like give them advice about how to be with Ari. And this girl got up and left the room and was just like, no, I'm not having oh, any of it. Crystal was talking. She said to Marie, and again, remember, Marie is competing for the marriage of Ari. She said to Marie, quote, I feel we know we are going to end up together. And this is just a process that we have to go through. So delusional. Like how, how, what, what level of self-awareness do you have to be at? We're literally talking to your competitor being like, this is just a process that we all have to go through. <laughs> you just have to be a witness to your slaughter. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, what, what do you think this woman wants to hear that from you? I have a question for you. Okay. Do you think it's possible they've discouraged her from saying, I'm not here to make friends? Because all of her behavior indicates she's not here to yes. make friends, but she hasn't said it. So I'm just like, what are we waiting for here? It's, it's, it's so clear. And it might be the editing. I'm giving Ari like a little bit of benefit of the doubt here. It might be the editing. It might be the way they do it. But like, she is not a good person. 
And the idea that he no. is he is finding time to spend with her. She will interrupt every single person that goes and talks to her. Like the idea that he's just like, oh, it's so good to see you. Like she is this oasis in the desert. She is this island of respite that he gets from the stress of dealing with these other non-crazy women. He's like, oh, good. The crazy one is here. Now I can finally be myself for a second. I, I have a good clip for this. I want to play it. Wait if I grab you up? Yeah, sure. Okay. See you girls in a bit. Bye, guys. Oh. It's really hard to have you in a room with a lot of other women. You know that, right? Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. I got to check myself a little bit. I, oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye, guys. It's really hard for me to be with you in a room full of women. It's just like, Ari, what are you doing? Here? I'm I'm pretty certain Ari's slept with a lot of women. I, I mean that like in a nice way. No, of course. And, but he acts like he's like 17 and like can't keep it in his pants. It's really weird. No, and it's also just like- He's 36. If I were in his shoes, does he not know that Crystal's crazy? I, I don't know. He, he might he not. No, He might not. He doesn't get a lot of exposure to her, but she did say like, she starts whispering and she's like, how should I act around you? Like when I'm like, should I come get you? Like she like is like asking like these questions to imply that they're definitely gonna end up together. And that's crazy behavior. Yes. And also like she does this thing where like one thing that always works is if you if you just kind of get a little over sexual with yeah. the bachelor, like we're men are so dumb. We're so <laughs> dumb. It's like all 25 of you signed up to marry me, but still, like the first chick that's a little like sexually aggressive, we're like, oh yeah, her. She's my favorite. She's the one. Even though all of them are literally like, yes, I want to marry you. But the one that's just like, oh, don't hold back around me. We're like, oh yeah. Like we're, we're just so like basic. Well, part of like the adolescence of this though is Crystal, I wouldn't even say is the most overtly sexual. She's the most like whispery and most like phone sexy. She's not not like actual sexy like and I don't even mean like oh sexy like like she reminds me of like someone you call on like a phone sex hotline <laughs> <laughs> she'd be great at that I, I mean we don't know that she hasn't done she's a fitness coach she's that was a fitness really coach. mean I'm sorry Crystal kind of but she's not even the most like sexually aggressive like we're gonna talk more about Becca but so many of these girls had just been like mounting Ari they just straddle him oh yeah and start just like making out with him like I'm just like does he have a sexual energy that's not coming through on TV well, they, I don't get it how did he get dubbed the kissing band it was that Bachelor in Paradise thing? No, it's from when he was um, on Emily's season. She was like, he's an amazing kisser and like he's like rumored to be the best kisser of all oh, time. Oh, that's good. That's a good reputation yeah. to have. He has this rep- reputation as being a great kisser, presumably very sensual and also very sexual. Like, I guess. I, I guess. I mean, there was that one. I'm kind of it, dying it to meet him. in a white dress that did like a straddle yes. move on him. Yes. But then like, what she, literally, this is what happened. We saw it. It was, she straddled him, was making out with him. And then she sort of like had an out of body experience and saw how it looked. And so stopped. she made it seem like she was just transitioning to the other side of the couch over him. It, it was, was kind of like getting in a cab or something where it's like, you don't know if they're going to slide over. So she's kind of like climbed over him. Sure. That's a good move. A cab move is this like it's a good one. Um, it's just pretty bizarre. I'm like kind of dying to meet Ari because I just really want to get a feel for his energy because I'm just so baffled. Yeah, it's like the same way that everybody talks about Bill Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like he must have that thing. But even Bill Clinton has more charisma on TV. I mean, he won the freaking presidency. Ari's it's not winning like, any I, votes. And you also wonder. It's like how did we end up at Ari? Like I, I understand know. Peter didn't want to do it, but like. If you were to power rank every male figure that's gone through this franchise in the past, what's it been, five years? Yeah. It's a lot. To Ari pick wouldn't be that high in the list of people that I would choose. I know. I, I don't know. I don't know how we got here. I want to briefly talk about Chelsea before, but in terms of Ari's judgment, because Chelsea is the other one who is just makes you go like, Ari, what are you thinking? You have yes. many more, many better options here. And Chelsea is the mom, and she seemed to me to be the most, uh, the biggest piece of evidence towards like producer inter- intervention Ooh. because the way she was talking about being a mom was basically like <laughs> straight out of fatal attraction. Uh, let's just run this clip really quickly. Today's date was amazing mm-hmm. and um, symbolic you of my so, own life. So good. It, it was tough to be around um, dogs in a playground setting with children running around oh, and then putting on a show and then having the front row being all children. And it was cr- kind of cool to see you in your element, too. Dogs are so cute. I like. love, love them. <laughs> okay. Isn't that a mom? Yes, that's a mom. And she's saying because she's a mom, she can't see kids. Jacoby, I'm not what? a parent. Okay. Please, please tell me if that makes any sense. What? <laughs> First of all, just think about people in the world. 
And she's like, I, I dealt with a lot of adversity today. I had to be around dogs and children in a playground setting. She made it sound like playground setting was like mid earthquake. You know, it's like a playground setting is actually exactly where you may want to be around dogs and children. And also like in the front row was all children. Like, what? It doesn't make any sense. It's really weird. And she also just makes it seem like her kid's dead or something. And her kid is not dead. I don't think her child is dead. But like, let me tell you this about The Batch. You know that we've both seen many seasons. Of many this seasons. It's one of our shared passions. Having a child can really work against you. And sure. let me tell you why. Because if you ever want to get this woman off the show, all you have to do is mention the child. Yeah. It's, 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 it's an automatic. How many times have we seen, like, I don't want to take you away from your child? And whenever that happens, you can see the look on, like, the woman or the man's face is always like, I don't care about the kid. Like, I'm here, yeah, aren't yeah. I? It's like, the kid's going to be there forever. I've got one chance at marrying you. <laughs> it always happens. Like, whenever they say, like, and because you've got, like, little Gary at home, like, I don't want to take you away from Gary. And, like, she's there's this look on her face, like, I don't care about Gary right now. Yeah. Gary's fine. Gary's in school five days a week. Leaves with his uncle every other day. I'm it's here fine. for this and only this. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, you Give yourself a little trap door. You're, you are your own trap door once you mention that you have a child. I will say also Ari was like, you're so good today. He was referring to her performance in like a fake dog show. Bad and so date. Bad, bad, bad date. TV. Bad TV. Bad date. Also, I love Fred Willard, but like I don't need him on The Bachelor. No, it didn't help a lot. No. It didn't help a lot. And yeah, I think they knew it was a bad date because it was a very short part of the episode. Tell. You yeah. could tell that they were looking for like 10 minutes out of that and yeah. they breezed through it. I don't understand what the what the like race on Detra was. They're putting on a show for the kids? I don't know. It was like at the Grove. It was just a really w- weird, the whole thing was weird. Also, I, I feel like there was some kind of decision made where like we need to soften Ari after a few days, uh, like a couple of days. They went on the date to Scottsdale last weekend and then he brought his dog back with him. That's actually, the, that happened on Rachel's season too where her dog like came with her. I feel like when things aren't going well, they're like, bring in the dog! Bring in the dog. And he even mentioned the dog at one point. He's like, so I've got a little piece of home with me, like yeah. my security blanket. And it's just like, is that really what you're looking for in a husband? Yeah. I, Guy that needs his dog around? All the time. You know, I need yeah, my you know dog. where I stand I need, on that yeah, one. Yeah, it's just like, I need, it's, it just, That's it, actually a deal breaker for me. And all, it's like, and I was looking at the dog in his home and I was like imagining him with all of his t-shirts color coded and hung up and I was just like, I think Ari's kind of depressed. <laughs> So, I mean, I'm projecting a lot on Ari right now, and maybe that says more about me than Ari, but like, let me just throw it out there. I was just like, I don't know if Ari is happy. That's a great a great point. Also, a lot of these women have been like pulling therapy sessions on him. Yes. I- including Becca, which we're going to talk about after we talk about Tripping.com. Let me tell you guys about Tripping.com. Did you know that the average family visits five websites before booking a vacation rental? With Tripping.com, one search lets you filter, compare, and sort over 10 million available properties on trusted sites like VRBO, TripAdvisor, Booking.com, and more. Don't wonder if you're getting the best deal. You'll save an average of 18% per night by booking your vacation with Tripping.com. Don't forget, if you want to save time and money while booking the perfect vacation rental for your next trip, head to Tripping.com slash Bachelor today. That's tripping, T-R-I-P-P-I-N-G dot com slash bachelor. All right, let's get back to it. I want to start by handing out my final rose of the week, and it goes to Becca, who the sports gal and I call Becca because there's two Beccas. And also she has A-H at the end. Yeah. Becca is, to me, the most sexual of the bunch. Well, oh, I've got a thing for this. Okay. And this isn't even my thing, but my wife, Joey, just nailed this. Uh Uh-huh. She's like, oh. Becca's an actor. Oh. She's like, oh, Becca's an actor. She moved oh. to LA to try to be an actor. Did you see her wrestling? Who was her character wrestling? Um, she Sex Kitten. Yeah, Sex Kitten. And when she was wrestling, she did like the claws and she had the tail. So I fell for her during the wrestling date. Let's play this clip. We're learning how to wrestle from the glow chicks. They're running around, they're intimidating everybody. So now Tia and Bibiana are like crying because they insulted them. But it's like, that's what wrestling is. It's a show. Has anyone ever watched WWE? It's what you do, it's like theatrical. It's theatrical. It's theatrical. Do you hear the yes. theatrical? Like she She's is like, it's theatrical, let's do an it. Actress. Yes. I promise she was in high school plays. Yeah. And not only that, like it's not only just like, hey, the sex kid and I can like make my hands look like a claw. When she's with Ari one on one, she flips into this mode, which is basically like I will give you whatever you want, Ari. It was like, amazing. I'm not no. being myself. I am being what you want from me. She is like a like a social chameleon actor type. And she pulled an incredible move. She was like, "You like me Boom. because because Boom. I don't need you." Give it to me. It was amazing. And he like 
like he legitimately had this look on his face. Was like, you're right. Yes. And it's like it's it's and I honestly feel that she is just an actor. I just want to say, whoever the nice couple that employs Becca. If you are a man and a woman and you're a heteronormative couple, I'm worried about you because Becca is a lot. Oh, and, oh sh- Becca will fuck your husband. Yes, Becca. Oh, yeah. Oh, Becca will fuck your husband. I don't want to and assume I don't anything. Di- I don't mean to disrespect Becca by saying that. No. I'm just saying, like, she's just kind of like flexy sexy, as we like to, to say. Absolutely. She's flexy sexy. She's down for whatever. She will tell you what's what. She will play mind games with you and make you complicit in it. Yeah, it's not even manipulation. Course. You're part of it. I would give my bank account number, my routing number, my passwords to Becca. Yeah, totally. Like she's like she has just got this like David Koreshian just like Jedi mind trick yes. thing that she will do to you. Yes. So she- obviously my wife is the first to point this out that we don't see her age. Yeah. Right. And like let me just do some some like forecasting of what's sure. going to happen here. I think that Becca is the second smartest person there. Ooh. Right? Who's number one? Um, We'll get to her. Okay. And Becca is basically saying, I'm not going to be who I am on the inside. I'm going to be what he wants me to be. Every time I'm going to give him what he wants, like he wants a challenge, there's a winner throwing himself at him, then I'm going to say that you just like me because I don't need you. And like she's just kind of like doing this whole dance with him, but she's not really into him. Totally. And my wife is like, oh, she's going to start running away with it because you notice how they haven't shown her age. Yeah. Her age is going to come up soon. It looks like they teased it next week. And what's going to happen is, is she's going to become the front runner that all the other women turn on. It happens every season. Someone gets like in sort of the 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 driver's seat, like, oh, he favors her. And then everyone else comes up with a reason why she's not right for Ari. And this season it's going to be her age, which I'm gonna ask you right now, how old do you think she is? I know. Can I guess? Sure. Twenty three. Very close. Twenty two. Twenty two. She might be twenty three now. And yeah. here's here's the thing about why this is gonna work out so well is because the bachelor's not like trying to shape new gender roles here trying to play into them right yeah and women hate younger women who are dating men that like are like are older than them like is that uh, a thing? yes definitely it's always like the trophy it's like the trophy wife thing oh, it's like yeah, you've yeah. trade you've traded up for a younger hotter woman and like this is like a small scale that ari's 36 crystal was born in the 70s like yeah, yeah maybe 60s <laughs> 60s who knows, <laughs> who knows? They, these women are a little bit older than usual because ari yes, is older Ari's older than usual and so like you know, the 30 year old women are going to be like, she's 22. She doesn't she's know anything. Enough. Yeah. She's she, not ready she for can't this. She's your wife yeah. and she's got to take care of that dog. Which is unfair. I yeah, also yeah. think Becca seems like more mature than most of them. And I think that, you know, and she seems like she has a social intelligence about her. Yeah. She's got a real confidence that the other ones just don't have. To and be like, honest. I, it's like over under how many times do you think Becca's been to Burning Man? Four. Yeah, like she, you know, like I mean, I she's just, twenty-two, so not that, not that many years. I, no, but she's just going since she was like four years old. Yeah. Like I just kind of feel like she's just kind of got this like flexible roll with it. I'm an actor. Yeah, and like, it's it's fun with it thing. Also, because she's not so desperate for Ari, she's like kind of more relaxing to watch. I'm not like yes. cringing along with her. I'm more like just really like, yeah, if Becca, you, you get it, girl. With Crystal, who was like, oh, well, we're obviously going to end up together. We're going to get married and have babies. I've already picked out names. And Becca's just kind of like, she's 22. She's like, yeah, he's cute. Yeah. He's the best thing I got going right now. Yeah. And like, since this is a competition, I guess I'll try to win it. But you don't get this feeling that she's already like picked out a wedding dress. No, not at all. Which she's is like, refreshing. Totally. And she's going to so- be great for Paradise. Oh, interesting. Oh, yeah. She's definitely gonna have all the guys like just like uh, into her, and she'll and she'll like just be going on a lot of dates. And one thing I like about her is like her appeal isn't purely physical. No, you know what I mean. Like she's got a personality. She seems like a good hang. She called Crystal a crusty cougar. Yeah, and also that was funny, uh, Crystal. When the producers say that your wrestling personality is gonna be cougar, you gotta you gotta push back on yeah. that. Just gotta, you be gotta like, push no. back on that one because like we all know you're not 29. Yeah, and the producers are like you're gonna be dressed up as a cougar. Like, you have to say, like, is there another outfit? Yeah. You have just, to. I know. Just be like, no, Crystal, I, I refuse. And Crystal didn't even get it. It just sort of, like, went right over her. She's like, yeah, I'm a cougar. Sure. I'm a cougar. Yeah, the voice is tough. What is it about Chelsea that bothers you? Um, I just thought that the—I I do think it is rude. I mean, like, you know, just accepting the rules of the game for what they are. I think it's rude to be constantly butting in and getting more time. Like, let some other girls get some time. And Chelsea just is, like, not quite as good at the game as Crystal is, but she's just, like— She's just taking up space. She doesn't deserve. Bibiana? I love Bibiana. 
Thank you. She's my runner out for Rose of the Week. Very sorry to see her go. And she and Tia were part of the drunkest, one of the drunkest moments of the week, which I really enjoyed. First of all, I love Tia. You in on Tia? Mm. Tia looks like JoJo can, can to we me. Go, can we do Tia? She does look like JoJo. Yeah. She reminds me of Jade from Jade and Tanner. Oh my a God. A little bit. I like Jade a lot, but she's like way more fun than Jade. Jade was like a Tia? wet blanket. Yeah. Jade was like a wet blanket. I like Tia because she's co signed by Raven. Raven. Yeah. Like anyone who Raven co signs, I'm down with, of course. <laughs> I love Tia. But here's the thing about Tia. Okay. I was so on board with Tia. She's in Arkansas. She's got that accent, which is just so lovely to hear. Sure. She's cute. She seems real. She seems like she drinks beers, not wines, which I'm into. But there's the thing with the when the glow lady pulled her hair and she kind of had a little freak out and started crying on the side. It's yes, just like, she did. It's like, ah, uh, when we're talking about getting married, like I have to deal with your idiosyncrasies for the rest of my life. Like if you're going to let that little adversity of like some, you know, washed up wrestler kind of being a little bit fake mean to you in an actor situation, that that's going to throw you for such a loop that you need to like take a time out and cry on the side like my four-year-old. No, thank you. <laughs> It's a bad indication for like the next 60 years of our lives. I'm a little concerned that we don't, we're not getting the real Tia to, to your point, because um, it seems like she was like ready to be like the fun Southern girl. Yes. And the second she was pressed, it kind of faded away. And then yes. in, in her one on one time with Ari, she was like, I didn't expect to act that way. And I, he's like, Yeah, I didn't really think you were like that girl. And she's like, Yeah, I didn't think I was either. And that's a little alarming. Yes. And that's one of the reasons Becca's so great. It's like we know, like, Becca is giving us a persona. And re- she's still real, real or not, I don't yeah, care. Yeah, it's not, she's, it's not. Not real. No. But like there might not even be a real one in there, but right. I like what I'm seeing. It doesn't, doesn't matter. I can only judge you on what you're putting in front of me. <laughs> doesn't matter. The most redeeming thing about Tia this week was her cute little friendship with Bibiana, which now has to come to of an course. end. Of course. And so my favorite, one, my, my drunk moment of the week with them was when they were sitting on the patio during the second group date and it's like broad daylight. I'm going to guess it's like 1.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. And they're um they're like, let's say a little prayer for ourselves tonight, like with The Bachelor. And they're just drinking these giant drinks that are like unclear what they are. And I'm like, oh, you guys just day drinking, of course. There's, not, there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to do. There's so much downtime on this show. So here, much downtime. On this show. Also, like, you're basically at, like, a long pool party when you're not, like, on a date. So, yeah, kick, yeah. kick back, booze it up. I, I I like it. I'm bummed that Bibiana is gone, Um, but I do feel like she was going to get a bad edit, so I'm kind of glad we're cutting it off at three episodes. It's a great point. I would say that Bibiana is, like, the one person on this program that I could see, like, being in my phone. Mm. You know what I mean? Like being actual friends with me. Sure. And like, and like arranging like beers. You know sure. what I mean? Like she tells you how it is. She's crazy. Never tried to date Bibiana, but she seems like a fun person to hang with. Like I, I, I would say like she would be one of the few people I've seen on this franchise that I could, I could see you in my personal life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how are you feeling about the reenactments they're doing so far? Two weeks in a row. It's Annalise. It's Annalise, yeah. So Annalise last week, scared of the bumper cars, bumper car mm-hmm. reenactment. It was the mirrors and the music. Yeah. This, this week... She was scared of dogs because a dog once attacked her. A cat once attacked me, and I like cats. Let me throw this out there. I would say 75, 78% of people that are walking this planet have had some sort of traumatic childhood dog experience. Yeah. It's just part of being a kid. Of course. You're their size. You don't know how to act around them, and they freak you out. But, like, two weeks in a row, yeah, they're like, I can't do this date because it's traumatic. And dogs? I, I don't really know. And also, like, girl. Like, why? I, I don't know. Hold hold it together. You can't go on a group date. What's your deal? And then she just became obsessed with kissing Ari. And she said the word kiss so many times that it basically lost all of its meaning. Let's let's listen to that. He's kissed most of the girls. And I'm like, kiss me like a kiss. Kiss? Kiss kissing him and kiss me. Kiss first. Why didn't he kiss me? He kissed her. So I need to kiss him tonight. Girl, if it's not happening, it's not happening. There's, One thing I've had to learn over my rough 32 years of life is if it's going to happen, it's going to. And it's you, going to. You just can't force it. One thing I've learned from being like the wrong end on this a couple times. Oh, we've, we've all been there. <laughs> is you don't want to verbalize the kiss. Yeah. You know, like once you verbalize it, you're really putting yourself in a danger zone for getting rejected. And then she was reje- summarily rejected. She was rejected. <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's like a, I had a terrible first kiss with my wife because I just like leaned in and just kissed her at the most inappropriate time in the world. But sometimes you has got to take that leap. Sure. But like if I were to say, hey, would you like to kiss me right now? Her response would be no. Right. And then it's good that you did it because I don't know how you come back from that. That, yeah. that no is hard to recover from. It's impossible. Yeah. And then, but not only that, is, is he said, quote, I just don't think that we're there yet. Yeah. Which is really, really rough because he's kissed so many other Everybody, women. Everybody. And like, you know. He doesn't even know their names and he's kissed them. And they've them. seen. And yeah. like, I don't think we're there yet, which is basically like, you're going home. Yeah. You're out. 
And yeah. she's not even going to get invited to the paradise. No, she's she's this a real. The last we've seen of Annalise. She's a real bummer, which is kind of too yeah. bad. Somewhere there's like a casting associate producer who's getting looked at during these. It's like it's like you know someone named Sarah, and they're like Sarah, you're Annalise is here because of you. Like, I, you told me she was going to be different. I wonder if the producers were like. We got to make the most out of how um, like neurotic Annalise is, like reenactments. Like, let's do it. Like, it was also like we can't just have her like ruin these dates with negativity and crying. Yeah. So let's like make some fun of it. Yeah, it's true. You just don't want to be the negative girl. Being on the being the negative girl just ruins it for you. And also, like, there's 15 women here, and like the part where Ari is like, oh, "I'm coming over to protect you." Like, yeah. you can make that play, and I'm just gonna say something that I shouldn't. You got to be a little cuter than Annalise to make that Ouch. play. Yeah. You know, like I shouldn't say that, no. you know, because, I, you know, because, hey, man, physicality doesn't matter. But in a romantic a situation, it does. Yeah, of course. And again, if you're the flyest chick in the room and you're crying, you need like a little like help from the guy. He's like, yeah, sure. I got you. I'll protect you in the demolition derby. But when you're Annalise, it's like, ah. Yeah. Ah. Also, you just don't, haven't done enough for him to have like sympathy towards you. You've only yes. you've only been weird. So, like, sometimes weird. Like, Becca is good weird. Annalise is bad weird. Annalise is, like, high-maintenance weird. Becca's like, sensual weird. I, I, it's just, like, a whole different kind yes, of thing. Becca is sensual weird. I'm yeah. glad you picked up that. She has a thing about her. She's got a real energy. Also, if I was on this show, I would, I would be doing a whisper campaign against Becca. I'd be trying to get rid of her. Can I pitch you my favorite woman on the show? Oh, yeah. I'm probably going to say her name wrong. Okay. Sian. Oh, Sian. That's a, no, she's great. Like, she, she won my rose last week. I love Sian as well. Like, why are we not getting more of her? I think she might be too smart. Who did Sean Lowe marry? What was her name? Catherine Jujuchi. Catherine. Like, Jujuchi? we might, I think that, I'm hoping that CN is getting Catherine. Bro, we're not a shower. Is that a term we've used before? <laughs> no. Okay. But, like, it's like, we're going to put her on the back burner for, like, the first six or seven weeks, and then she's going to come on at the end of the season, like the Chargers. Uh-huh. You know what uh-huh. I mean? Like, like, I feel like it's like, I feel like they, I feel like it's a long con that producers are giving her, because, I mean, look, this is just my personal subjective opinion. She is the most physically attractive woman there. She's beautiful. In my mind. Yeah. Right? That's just my David Jacoby opinion. And she went to Yale. Yeah. She's got to be smart. I, I've looked she's, at her resume. It's online. It's available. She's never said anything embarrassing. No. Like, she's never been particularly, like, funny or, like, super fun and extroverted. Like, I need to spend time with her. But, like. Crucially, she, she works in real estate. It's a lot to talk with Ari. Well, half of them work in real estate. Like, she, they're basically, like, you can be on the show if you're though. named Lauren and you work in real estate. She, she has a more legit real estate claim than Ari does, in my What's opinion. What's real estate claim? Like, she's like. Oh, you know I watch a lot of real estate programs. Me too. Yeah. Million Dollar Listing has been flames this Crushing. season. Love it. Love God, it. I love flag. Also, I'm obsessed with Malibu. i just completely obsessed. I look at Malibu real estate like once a day now. So, <laughs> great, so, great. Can't afford it. New, yeah, breaking news. Say, maybe, maybe by 2045, you'll be in a position where I, that's, I'm looking, that's relevant. I'm looking for a rich husband, if you know anyone. Oh, yeah. you are. Yeah, hopefully someone who works in private equity, because I think that's more stable than like some other rich careers. So. Look, it, look. Drug dealer, private equity. If yeah, you got a rich I, husband, like, whatever. Yeah, no questions. Yeah, yeah. No questions asked. Um, back to the Bachelor. We are going to wrap by my new favorite segment, Chris Harrison TRT. He was on this week's episode for a grand total of two hundred and sixty seconds, which amounts to four minutes and thirty three seconds, nearly double of last week, and really quite a bit. Jacoby, we're getting a lot more Chris Harrison so far through three episodes. This is the most Chris Harrison we've gotten, like maybe since Emily's season. I'll tell you why. He complained. Oh, I like that. First of all, his agent would complain. Yeah, his like, agent, he wouldn't go straight to the producers. His agent But complained. I would say that, like, they're kind of looking at Ari. And, like, granted, like, The Bachelor is never this captivating personality. You know, like, probably the best Bachelor of all time was Juan Pablo because he was disliked. Like, he was, like, not likable. Mm-hmm. But Ari's not bringing a lot to the table in terms of personality. No, he's not bringing the Like, heat. when Ari does the thing where you think he basically give him a script and he brings out a drink and he talks to them before the cocktail reception, before yeah. the rose ceremony, like— Generally, I'm pretty impressed by the presentation that the bachelors give. I'm like, look, these guys are not professional orders, but wow, he really pulled that off. Ari doesn't really bring it. So now there's more Chris involved. Interesting. You notice Chris and Ari had the same suit, tie, undershirt, pocket square combination this week? For which date? Really weird. It was the very end oh, for the rose ceremony. Oh, that's so weird. Also, Annalise handed Ari a date when he walked into the rose ceremony. For the cocktail party, I mean, which oh, yeah. I, I thought was weird, too. Ari's got some weird outfit choices. He also showed up very dressed up, like, in an all-black suit for the wrestling date, and then slowly was pairing it back. Like, yeah, because he's, like, working. He's, like, running around and getting thrown around. It's kind of like around. he does it. He's, like, not prepared for what he's doing. It's really weird. Yeah, I, well, I, his dog's there. 
I'm dying to meet this guy. He's so weird. All right, well, I'm sure he'll come on the podcast I if he doesn't know. listen to this episode. I, yeah. I trashed him for like three weeks well, straight. The like if, I, if there was a podcast about Jalen and Jacoby, I would listen to that thing. It could be our Frost Nixon. Like we could, it could get contentious. He oh, could, I like that. He could tell you all I'm wrong, and then I like that. And then and then I'd be like, just never tell me I look good in yoga pants. You know, one of the reasons I have trouble listening to Bachelor Party. Because you wish you were on it? Yeah, because I'm jealous. Yeah. I'm jealous. I miss Especially you, man. when it's like a good episode, I get jealous. Well, I'm happy. I think we got a really good one. This was probably, this is the best of the three episodes so far. Uh, thank you so much for listening. Can I plug my podcast? I was going to say, Jacoby, thank you so much for coming. Yep. Tell us where we can find you. Jalen and Jacoby, new time slot on ESPN2 every day at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. In other time zones, you can figure it out. And there's a podcast you can search and, and what do you call it? Subscribe to. Subscribe. Jalen and Jacoby. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back to talk about Becca's age next week, probably. And subscribe if you haven't yet.